Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we'll be just discussing and analyzing A Canticle for Lubowitz, a sci-fi dystopian novel created in 1959. Written by Walter Miller, this novel explores a futuristic society, one that's very different from the one we're currently living in. After the flame dulge, where the simpletons, as they were called, demolished all signs of knowledge and literature, the human race must cope and go on. This book explores that concept, how the human race must evolve, absence of any virtual knowledge and literature of previous generations. This video essay is going to explore the differences, the themes, and the material that's brought up in class over the last two months that have helped uh, me understand, comprehend, and examine this piece of literature. The first theme I want to touch on is the government intervention one, a theme that's found consistently throughout the novel. This theme actually invokes memories of Apple's Big Brother commercial in 1984, a commercial that's still pretty prevalent today. We are one people, with one will, one resolve, one cause. Our enemies shall talk themselves to death, and we will bury them with their own confusion. We shall prevail. Throughout the novel, the church serves as a big brother, first to the brothers, and then to society in general. This is evident in Chapter 3 when Brother Francis, after his meeting with the Blessed Lebowitz, the protagonist of Act 1, is forced to confess to the Father about thinking about eating food, a sin in the AOL. Confess. I'm innocent. Hmm? No, no. This moment shows the power that the church holds over, uh, one, its members, and then to, to society as general, telling them um, that they must confess all of their sins or else God will not forgive them. This also pulls into the privacy sector of the course. The privacy sector of the course instructs us that all our information is not under wraps. So think of it, think of it as a Google search, except instead of searching only what people make public, we're also looking at everything they don't. So. Emails, chats, SMS, whatever. Yeah, but which people? The whole kingdom, Snow White. Someone is always watching. Big Brother is always watching and always analyzing and using it in order to uh, either make more profit or use it to their benefit. This is evident in the documentary, The Social Dilemma, where it's demonstrated that many people use our data in order to make more profit and to use it for their benefit. And that, despite our best efforts, nothing's ever private, not anymore. Google's just a search box, and Facebook's just a place to see what my friends are doing. What they don't realize is there's entire teams of engineers whose job is to use your psychology against you. Another aspect discussed in this course and touched upon in the novel is the usage of genetics. In Act 3, Miss Grails is introduced. She's a character with two heads. Her introduction is during Act 3, the period with the most tech influence, that's not a coincidence. Although it's not explicitly stated in the novel, one should correctly assume that this is a byproduct of the increase of technology of the era. This is assumed considering no other character from any other act have such deformities. The increased technology presence from this era is an issue that's prevalent throughout Act 3, from increased nuclear disasters to the evacuation of the planet, even to the triage of those injured by a nuclear disaster. These triage moments brings up the memories from the voices of Chernobyl, the novel that we, that we read mid-class, recounting those suffering from the after-effects of the Chernobyl. That incident is a day that tremendously changed the direction of their lives. Act 3 also brings up the Mad Idea slash the Countdown to Zero documentary, which is disgusting class and which we had to watch. Although this current world has largely avoided the mutual assured destruction ideal, the novel presents an, an other circumstance with competitive nuclear strikes between um, Asia and the U.S., which has massive ramification on the world affairs and eventually leads to the novel's haunting last page, the evacuation of the planet in a Noah's Ark moment. This brings up another religious connection 
a connection which is prevalent all throughout the, the novel. The theme of the book, that technology can be dangerous, as shown by the last page, where humans are literally leaving. We have literally killed our planet with matching nuclear strikes, where we're no longer able to inhibit our planet. Although it brings up the age-old question, is technology good? I believe it is uh, a net positive, helping us treat curable diseases, for example. However, it get, if it gets into the wrong hands, then it's no longer one. Overall, the book paints a rather bleak picture of human reasoning. I'd argue that none of the main characters find happiness by the end of the novel. Brother Francis dies, the both children lament their birth, and the tech-savvy generation has to end up leaving the planet because they've killed it with nuclear strikes. Maybe it's not that technology is bad, maybe it's just being used by the wrong people.